Welcome to Critical Health News' weekly video Bright Bite with pharmacist Ben Fuchs. Hey Ben, how's it going? Going good, Jaunty. Good to talk to you again, my friend. Yeah, it's been a while. I understand you've got uh, something on the top of your tongue. You want to? You well, want to I thought about. we talked. You know, last time we talked about the simplicity of disease and how your diagnosis doesn't matter and how all diseases have the same thing underneath. And so I thought I'd elaborate on that with something I call the triangle of disease. Perhaps you've heard me talk about that. And these, the triangle of disease, are the three points of breakdown that initiate all degenerative disease processes. See, the body is a machine in a sense. It's biological, of course. But it is a machine in the sense that it's designed to perform work. It's designed to do work. And in order for any machine, biological or otherwise, to be able to do work, it needs one very important thing, energy. No work gets done without energy. In fact, in a way, energy is involved in the very definition of work. You can't produce a change unless there's some energy that allows you to produce that change. When we're healthy, when we're fine, when we're strong, when we're vital, when we're young, when we're repairing, when we're doing our business, when our body's working as it should work, there's plenty of energy around. There's energy in abundance. When we're sick, what happens is there's some kind of disruption in how the body processes energy. So in order to understand sickness, we've got to understand what goes wrong in the energy processing, in the energy processing systems. Now there's three main energy processing systems. You have one system that's involved with gathering and accumulating energy. You have another system that's involved with storing and releasing energy that's been accumulated and gathered. And then you have a third system that's involved with allocating that energy. So you've got gathering and accumulating energy, you've got storing and releasing energy, and you've got uh, uh, channeling or allocating energy. The system that's involved with gathering and accumulating energy, we call that the digestive system. The system that's involved with storing and releasing energy, we call that the blood sugar system. And the system that's involved with distributing energy to where it needs to to go for the body to perform its work, we call the adrenal thyroid system. The adrenal glands and the thyroid are linked together. And these three points make up what I call the triangle of disease. You can think of it as a triangle of health when they're working correctly, but in terms of sickness and illness, when the body breaks down, it breaks down at these three points. It does not gather and accumulate energy effectively, it does not store and release energy effectively, and it does not allocate and distribute that energy correctly. These three points constitute what I call the triangle of disease. Now this is important because from these these three points uh, ensue every single chronic degenerative disease process we can name. You You ever hear this philosophical concept called Occam's razor? Absolutely. Okay. Occam's razor, also known as the law of parsimony, says that the simplest and the easiest solution is always going to be the first one that you want to try. It's always going to be the best, at least to try it first. And the reason this is important is because if you have a disease state, say cancer, heart disease, autoimmune disease, whatever your particular disease is, it can be overwhelming. You don't know where to start. You don't know where to begin. You're looking at the symptoms. The symptoms are going to be pain. The symptoms are going to be swelling. The symptoms are going to be an inability to to move your body. There's all these different ways that the breakdowns can occur. And if you try to treat your disease state at the symptomatic level, you're going to go crazy. And you're not going to be able to solve the problem. But if you understand that all of our disease states, all of our degenerative disease states, and all of our symptomology arise from these three points of fundamental breakdown, then it becomes simply a matter of correcting three points. You don't have to worry about the genetics and the molecular nature and all the different biochemicals that are secreted and all the different symptomologies that you're dealing with. All you have to do if you're truly interested in reversing a a degenerative disease process is backtrack to these three fundamental points, the triangle of disease from which uh, which point all other diseases arise. So how do you do it? Well, first of all, you always focus on digestive health. The digestive system breaks down first. And because the digestive system is responsible for accumulating energy, for gathering the energy up from food, 
you can see how you're going to have a fundamental problem if you can't gather up and accumulate energy. Your body's not going to have the energy it needs to do its work, which is why no matter what your health issue is, you've got to start off with the digestive system. If you are dealing with some kind of digestive impairment, and rest assured if you have any other disease state, because this is the fundamental point, this is the fundamental point on the fundamental triangle of disease, you guaranteed have some kind of digestive health issue, and you could take all the nutritional supplements you want, you can take all the you can eat all the correct foods that you want, but if you have a breakdown at this point, the digestive system point, where you're not get, able to gather and accumulate the energy, nothing else is going to work correctly. So you've got to start off with digestive health. You've got to start off with helping your body accumulate and gather energy from food. Now, the, the sad thing about the digestive system, or digestive system breakdown, is it occurs woefully early. For many people, it occurs at birth. For some people, it occurs in utero, in the womb. Nature has designed a system where human babies are born early. They're born premature. It's because we got big heads and we got big brains. So it's hard enough for a baby to come out of the, a female birth canal, as is. But if, the, if uh, nature had a system where the baby had to wait for the head to get big enough or for the head to be completely mature and the brain to be completely developed, the baby would never make it out of the womb or make it, never make it down the, the birth canal. So nature has set up a system where babies are born early. However, because babies are born early, there are parts of the body that are immature and that take time to develop. One of those, uh, one of those parts, one of those systems, if you will, that has to develop over the course of time postnatally after birth is the digestive tract. No problem, because nature has set up a way for this to occur. We call that breast milk and breastfeeding. And this is the main role, or one of the main roles of breast milk, is to ha grow the baby's digestive tract, which, by the way, interestingly and importantly, is synonymous, essentially, with the immune system. The immune system lives in the digestive tract. So babies are born with premature, immature digestive systems and immune systems. Now, if, if, if all is working accordingly, the mom will breastfeed, the mom will be healthy, she'll have enough nutrition, the baby will breastfeed, and the growth factors will come out in the breast milk, and the baby's digestive system, digestive tract, the intestines, and the immune system will all mature the way they're supposed to mature. However, we know that one-third of babies aren't even breastfed. And who knows how many babies aren't breastfed long enough? And who knows how many babies are breastfed with milk from mothers who aren't nutritionally competent themselves or who have their own health issues. And when a mom has health issues, her, uh, the biochemicals of disease that she's producing are coming out in the breast milk. So many, if not most, babies begin their lives with compromises at this very fundamental point on the triangle of disease. Now, the digestive system, as we said, is responsible for gathering and accumulating energy, and energy is what it's all about. We can't do work without energy. We can't grow without energy. We can't uh, uh, detoxify without energy. We can't do anything without energy. And so right from the get-go, for many of us, we've got a breakdown at this very fundamental point where we're gathering and accumulating energy. Then we get into the second point on the triangle of disease, which is the body's ability to store and release energy. This is the blood sugar system, and this is the role of the blood sugar system, is to store energy and then to release energy. But we see that if the digestive system is breaking down, immediately we're going to have a problem storing and releasing energy because we're not accumulating and gathering enough energy. That's, this is where you run into problems with blood sugar and juvenile diabetes, uh, or uh, type 2 diabetes, they call it adult onset diabetes, but now they have to call it type 2 diabetes because kids are getting it, blood sugar problems in children, obesity in children. We know it's a significant problem. So by the time a kid is two or three years old, he's got digestive issues and he's got blood sugar issues. These are all following a disruption in how the baby's digestive system or digestive tract is growing after birth. So you've got the digestive breakdown, you've got the, the blood sugar breakdown, and then because you're not, accumulating and, you're not uh, accumulating and gathering energy, and you're not releasing and storing energy appropriately, you're going to have issues allocating that energy, distributing that energy. And this is the third point on the triangle of disease, the adrenal thyroid complex. From the point where the adrenal glands and the thyroid, becomes, uh, the thyroid become dysfunctional, following messed up blood sugar, technically called dysglycemia, or prediabetes, or even diabetes, and digestive health issues, you have the jumping off point to all health challenges, which is why the first thing you want to do if you're dealing with a health issue is focus on digestive health. Look for problems with foods. Look for 
uh, 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 bowel movement issues, gas, bloating, heartburn. Find them. If you don't think you have them, look for them. Because if you have a chronic degenerative disease, by definition, a disease that progressively uh, gets worse, where you deteriorate over time, where you don't heal, almost by definition, you have to have a digestive health issue. And the fact that you don't notice it is not indicative of whether it is there or not. So it, it it's behooves anyone who's dealing with a chronic health issue, a degenerative health issue, to look for digestive problems. Not to make them up, but look, look for them, and then once you find them, associate them with foods. Whether those foods are grains and gluten or eggs or dairy or even healthy foods. A lot of times people think, oh, well, I'm only eating organic or I'm only eating vegetables. I just have salads all day. Well, guess what? You can have a problem with broccoli. You can have a problem with tomatoes. You can have a problem with potatoes. You can have a problem with kale. You can have a problem with things that are ordinarily, under ordinary circumstances, we would think of as good food. So don't have preconceived ideas about what a good food is or what a bad food is. Look for how you react to that food. And then simultaneously with looking for problem foods and eliminating, uh, eliminating those problem foods, you've got to use support, nutritional support for the digestive tract. Chief among the nutritional supplements for the digestive system are probiotics and good bacteria. Also fermented foods, that's another good source of bacteria. Vegetables in general are, are, are good uh, uh, digestive salve foods. They soothe the digestive tract. Uh, celery, spinach, uh, kale, leafy vegetables. These are good sources of something called nitrates, which are very important for digestive health. They're also good sources of fiber, which are good, uh, good for digestive health. Fi both fiber and nitrates provide an environment for probiotics and good bacteria to thrive in. So using vegetable juices is another great strategy for the digestive system. Using gelatinous kinds of substances, things like cartilage or aloe or noni, these all have a coating and soothing effect on the digestive tract. Likewise, glucosamine sulfate, which is ordinarily used to treat arthritis or chondroitin and these kinds of substances. And the second point on the triangle of disease needs to be addressed, and again, this is for all chronic degenerative diseases from autoimmunity to cancer to heart disease, the second point is the blood sugar system. Stabilize the blood sugar. Eat less uh, insulin spiking foods and blood sugar spiking foods, refined carbohydrates, even vegetable carbohydrates can be a problem. Starchy foods like potatoes can be a problem for some folks. If you notice that you bloat or you feel gassy after you eat these kinds of foods, almost guaranteed you're having a problem processing these sugary foods. If you feel tired after you eat foods, that's another indicator that you may have an issue with uh, a sen uh, insulin sensitivity. Your insulin may be too sensitive or it may not be sensitive enough. Uh, in fact, if you have a chronic degenerative disease, just assume that you have dysglycemia issues, dysglycemia being the fancy way of saying messed up blood sugar. Use nutrients to help your body process sugar, the B vitamins, chromium, vanadium, something called alpha lipoic acid, vitamin E, amino acids like taurine and arginine can be very helpful. Vitamin C can be important for helping your body process sugar. And the electrolytes, potassium, calcium, sodium, magnesium, and chloride. Best way to get all of these nutrients is with nutritional supplements, things like the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, and fresh fruits and vegetables, especially fresh vegetables. You might want to be careful about fruits. Fruits do have some good things in them, but modern fruits have been bred over the course of really millennia, thousands of years, certainly hundreds of years to be super sweet. So you gotta be really careful with your fruits. But vegetables and vegetable juices and vegetable soups, you, uh, you can eat those all day long. In fact, we should be eating them all day long. And then the third point is the adrenal thyroid complex, what I call the adrenal thyroid complex. And I call it a complex because the adrenal glands are your uh, distribute energy in the case, of, remember the adrenal thyroids are distributing energy, allocating energy. The adrenals are allocating energy for emergencies and the thyroid is allocating energy for day-to-day -day activities. So by working on the adrenal thyroid complex, you will improve the body's ability to redirect energy. And in combination with uh, all your digestive strategies, your blood sugar strategies, once you start to work on the adrenals, adrenals and the thyroid, your body will be able to allocate the energy that it's releasing and storing better because you've wor been working on the blood sugar system and then it's accumulating and gathering more effectively because you've been working on the digestive system. How do you work on the adrenal thyroid complex? Well, there's a lot of ways, but the best way to do it is to calm the body down. 
The more calm the body is, the more relaxed the body is, the healthier and the more appropriate its allocation and distribution of energy will be. Lots of ways to do this. Slow, deep breathing is one great way. Massage is another great way. Naps are a good way. Meditation, Reiki, body work. These are all wonderful ways that you can relax the body. And when I say relax the body, a lot of it has to do with relaxing the muscles, the, skeletal, the muscular, musculoskeletal system. For example, we carry a lot of tension in our face. So by relaxing the muscles around the mouth, relaxing the muscles around the jaw, which by the way, the masseter muscle here is your strongest, most powerful muscle in the body. It's your bite muscle. And we tend to have a lot of tension here. Relaxing this jaw area, the mouth area, also the eye area. We tend to hold a lot of tension in the eyes. Simply by relaxing your eyes and taking a nice soft focus instead of a concentrated focus, you can almost instantly feel your body relaxing. Hot tubs, hot water, uh, showers, uh, even a, a hot washcloth laid across the eyes can be wonderful ways to relax the body and improve the way it allocates energy. Now, the beautiful thing about working this way is there are no medical interventions. These are all things that you can do out of the comfort, comfort of your own living room. Another thing, another beautiful uh, aspect of this triangle of disease is once you start working this way, you'll notice results quickly. In fact, if you employ a technique called biofeedback, you heard this term, biofeedback, it's when you actually pay attention to your, your uh, uh, body's chemistry, your body's, uh, the processes that are going on in your body, you'll notice that things are improving as you employ these strategies. For example, after we eat a meal that is problematic, after we eat foods that are problematic, after we eat foods that are somehow putting a burden on the digestive system, inflammation goes up. After we eat foods that are problematic, our pulse will start to raise. Our blood pressure may get higher. So if you start to work on your digestive system and you're applying biofeedback techniques where you're paying attention or becoming aware of your body's processes, you'll notice that you do, if you have arthritis, for example, or if you have some kind of inflammatory health condition, you notice that you don't have pain or you don't have as much pain if, if you start paying attention to your digestive symptomology. You'll notice that your blood pressure will have a tendency to, to, uh, to drop, to be reduced if you start paying attention to your digestive, digestive health. Likewise, with paying attention to blood sugar and watching uh, your intake of refined carbohydrates and insulin or blood sugar spiking foods, you'll notice that your blood pressure will have a tendency to slow down. You'll notice inflammatory pain improves. And you'll notice you have more energy. One of the neatest things about eating less refined carbohydrates and sugary foods is you don't have that high blood sugar, low blood sugar roller coaster. So you have more energy and more stable energy throughout the day. Likewise, with the third point on the triangle of disease, once you start to relax the body, you'll find that you have more resilience, more strength, and more energy during the day, and you're more able to function throughout your day. So the beautiful thing about this triangle of disease model, aside from the fact that it will help with every single chronic degenerative disease, because this is where the chronic degenerative diseases are being initiated from. In addition to this, the beautiful, uh, beautiful features of this model is it allows you to apply and take advantage and leverage the health benefits from the comfort of your own living room with zero medical intervention. And you can, by using biofeedback techniques, witness the results by a reduction in your symptomology and an overall improvement in how you're doing your day-to-day -day business and living your life. I call that the triangle of disease. You can apply it to every single health issue, every single health challenge that you have. In fact, I would go as far as to say there is no such thing as a chronic health degenerative challenge that is not fundamentally subst substood does it, on top of, if you will, this triangle of disease. You've got the triangle, and then at, from the tip of the triangle, the thyroid adrenal complex, you have the jumping off point to every single chronic degenerative disease you can name.